Okay, great. So now we know why we're picking eigenvectors, because they're good. But we can actually do better. We can actually quantify what the variance along the eigenvector is going to be. And again, it's not terribly difficult, so we're just going to do it. All right. So now E is an eigenvector. We're projecting every instance to E, just doing a dot product, and we want to measure the variance along E. Now we're assuming that E is an eigenvector from the previous slide. Okay. So that is the variance. Um, I'm going to drop the mean because I claimed the zero, uh, but now I'm actually going to go through why the mean is zero, right? So I'm not talking about the mean in the original space. I'm talking about the mean in the projected space. So it's the mean of these projections. Why is that zero? Well, that's because you can rewrite the mean in the projected space as follows, right? So this is the projection of xi onto e, this whole thing uh, in the parens. And I'm uh, taking these projections, these are scalar numbers, adding them up over all instances and taking the average. So that's the projected mean. And you'll see that you can just change around the sums. And if you change around the sums and move e to the outside, what you have is sum over i's xij. And what is that? That is the mean, that is the average of the jth attribute. So that's the average of the jth attribute over all the instances. Right. <clears throat> and the average of the jth attribute over all instances in the original space must be zero, because we centered the data. That, that's the definition. From each attribute, you subtract the mean. Right. So, so, the, mean, so the new mean must be zero. So this, this quantity is zero, and anything projected to uh, anything multiplied by zero is zero. So I have a big zero vector here. I project it to my vector e. I'm going to get a zero. So another way to put it, uh, the reason the projected mean is zero is because uh, the mean of projected values is the same thing as the projection of the mean. The mean was zero. Projection of the zero is zero. So the new mean is going to be zero. OK, great. So, um, so that's my variance along the eigenvector e. Now I'm going to take it and play around with it a little bit. So uh, this is the projected value and I'm just squaring it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as two sums. Multiply it as sort of, these two sums are completely identical and they're the same thing at the top. I'm using a different attribute here. I use j, now I'm using a. That's just so that I don't mix them up, right? Uh, but there are two things multiplied by each other, right? Now, once I have it in this form, I can move the sums around again, right? just like I did it before. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sum that involves the i's and move it inside, have it gather all the terms that have the i's in it. That's xia from here and xij from here. No other terms involve the i, uh, so they are going to go outside the sum. So I'm going to have ej here, ea here and the summation over the a and the j um, outside. Okay? <clears throat> and then, of course, you look at this. I, once again, you, re you recognize that this is your covariance between attribute a and attribute j. Right? You just i goes over all the instances, so this is the covariance between a and j. Right? So what do I have? This whole thing is the covariance between a and j, so I have the sum over attributes j, the covariance between a and j, times the jth component of eigenvector e. Right, that part. And then e a stays outside for now. <coughs> Here, I can use the fact that I have an eigenvector. e is an eigenvector, so I know what this sum is going to look like. This, again, is what we had before. You're taking the eighth row of the covariance matrix multiplying it by your eigenvector, and you know that what you're going to get back is just the eighth component of the eigenvector. Right. So just that. Eighth component of eigenvector E multiplied by uh, the eigenvalue. <coughs> okay, so uh, this whole part becomes lambda EA, and what I have left is the sum over all the attributes lambda EA times E a, right? I can move lambda outside because it's a constant, it's an eigenvalue, it's, it's the same thing across all attributes. And what I have left is the sum of the squares of the components in vector E. And I know that vector E must have unit length because that's how I defined it on the previous slide, and eigenvectors have unit length. Uh, so this whole thing, this is one, 
So this whole thing collapses to uh, lambda. Now, what did we just show? We showed that this, which is the variance of projections along the eigenvector, turns out to be the eigenvalue. So that's kind of cute. Right? So you know what vector you're projecting to. It's an eigenvector, and we proved that it's the best that we can have. We also know how much variance you're going to have along that vector, and that's just the eigenvalue. So that t explains why we pick eigenvectors with the biggest eigenvalues. Right? Because they are the ones that are going to capture the most variance. Once you project to them, they capture the most variance. So uh, it, all, it all becomes kind of uh, obvious.